All right. Hey, hi everybody. Chris Petrie here. We're doing some oils, oil painting. We're going to just cover a few more basics before we kind of get started with, um, creating our, our paintings that we're going to work on here. We're just doing some fun work with oils. If you've been working in watercolor for some time, maybe a couple months to a year, you'll find this an easy transition over to oils. Again, I always mention that, um, I am using, um, artisan, from Windsor Newton. So I have all my supplies in my, in below in my comment section here on this video. So if you ever want to shop for materials, I have everything listed, brushes, paints, the, um, oil boards that I use, um, pretty much, uh, everything, you know, water containers, um, all the supplies that I use, art supplies are, are right below if you want to shop those. And it's right on Amazon, very convenient. Um, I do 90% of my shopping on Amazon. It's just a great place to shop. It's very convenient, fast delivery, great prices. You can shop around on there too. And you can also read all the reviews on everything. So you don't ever feel like you'll always feel like you can review something, look at the reviews that people are leaving comments, and then you can make your decision from there because you're, you're going to get like a really good, you know, feel for what people are saying about different products on there. So in any case, we're using the Artisan, Windsor Newton Artisan Water Mixable Oil Colors, which is the biggest part of why I'm so excited about doing oil paintings now is there's no more using all the paint thinners and all that kind of stuff, turpentine and kind of flammable stuff. There's no more of that. You can just use these water mixable Windsor Newton paints and uh, they're called Artisan is the, is the um, line of paints and all you need is your uh, watercolor bucket. I would... Maybe I would use a different water bucket like I would, you know, for me in my studio, I have a water bucket that I use for oils, for my oil mixable paints here. And then I use my other water containers for my watercolors. So I kind of keep those separate and I'm using different brushes. And again, you'll see those in the description below, in the description box. So, so this is what we're going to use. We're going to, again, we're going to mix these same three colors. We're going to make another color wheel just like this quickly and then we'll show you the tertiary colors because we've already covered mixing these together to get our different secondary colors and primary colors. So that's going to be our um, next uh, bit of work here. Let's get our tertiary colors and kind of see what they look like. You can kind of see they're a little more grayish in color. They're, they don't have as much intensity of color. They're starting to get a little bit more uh, grayish, which is kind of nice. They're toned down a little bit. They're not as, um, uh, you know, um, exciting. And, um, um, you know, they just don't have that like real pop of color. Once you start mixing your colors, you, and that's what you want to do in a painting. You want to have some really exciting straight out of the tube colors. And then you also want to have some grays mixed into your colors when you're doing paint, when you're creating paintings. So let's kind of cover that by going to the next level and creating tertiary colors around our color wheel. And once you get those tertiary colors around here, then you're pretty much set. You have pretty much a great idea of how to mix your colors out and get a little more um, grayish looking, uh, kind of mellow looking colors, not as uh, impactful and bright and uh, with tons of chroma. And then uh, also too, we'll kind of cover some tint and shade and tone, which are mixing black, white, and gray into your colors to even adjust your colors, uh, uh, you know, even more in your paintings to make everything look a lot more pleasant and pleasing in your artwork. Okay, so let's take a quick break. I'll get set up here and grab a new board. And then we'll um, start with our uh, mixing our tertiary colors from our primaries. All right. Hey, we just put our new board down. So we have our brand new oil board down. It's basically pressed cardboard with a um, canvas uh, covering over it for our oil painting. And uh, we'll get started with our color wheel. And what I'll do is I'll just use maybe a um, roll of tape. And you can get really fancy with these uh, these boards when you make these. You know, you can maybe, I would always suggest maybe try to create one of these, like a first run, a trial run first, and then and then maybe make a second uh, second um, color wheel the way we're doing it here in this video. That is more of a finished copy that you can save and actually leave that in your studio and you can have it to always reference. So you can leave it right by your workstation wherever you're working in your kitchen, your basement, 
you know, your living room, dining room, wherever you like to work. If you have your own little spot carved out for your your painting in your home, I'm um, hoping you, you do have something like that, like where you have a little area where you can maybe always use the same place to paint. Maybe you have a big plastic uh, tote bucket you, um, container. You can put all your art supplies in there when you're done and then bring it back out and have everything organized. And this way when you're painting, you're not stressing over finding things. I think when I first started artwork, I was always searching around for stuff until I finally realized I just got to keep everything in one spot in a bin. So I used to have a bin with all my art supplies in the bin. And that made things a lot easier. Then I just opened up the bin, took the cover off, and I had all everything in there that I always use on a constant basis. So let's get started again with the color wheel. We'll go through this a little quicker. The first time we, we did this color wheel, we went a little faster, or a little slower, I should say. So this one we're going to go a little quicker. We're just going to make the, um, the watch dial, basically. So we're going to go uh, 12 o'clock six o'clock here this is a little bit light so I will go over this darker let me go over this darker so you, I'm gonna use my pencil and I'm just gonna go around here now that I've used my paint now that I've used my um, art, artist tape roll to get my circle my perfect circle like that then I'm really set I have that and I just put it basically in the center of the board and then I just made my hash mark for 12 and 6 o'clock, which is the watch dial, clock dial. So I have 12 and 6. Then what I want to do is um, I want to lightly make a, a 3 and a 9 o'clock hash mark here. And then I want to go halfway between those points here and here and here and here. So if I go through this one more time, I made a... 12 o'clock hash mark and a 6 o'clock hash mark and then I want to do this divide the um, circle in half then I made a 9 o'clock and a 3 o'clock hash mark and then from there I want to go halfway between 12 and 3 for my next hash mark there and halfway between 9 and 6 for my other hash mark here and then I can go like this and that'll be our second. So we're basically making like a pie chart. Like that. And then we do the same thing here. Between 3 and 6, we make a halfway point. And between 9 and 12, we make a halfway point. And that'll be our other line. And once you have these few lines set up on your circle, you're all set. And then what we do next is we just cover like the primaries first so we'll, we'll say this is red red and then over here we have blue and then over here we have yellow so that's our primaries let's get those onto the so I'll do this some yellow I'll squeeze out some of this artisan water mixable oil colors by Windsor Newton. Blue, French ultramarine blue. So the colors actually on the tubes we have cadmium orange, I mean cadmium yellow. This is uh, French ultramarine blue. And this is cadmium red. And we'll put that over here. Okay, those are our three primaries. So let's get those onto the color wheel right away. And again, I won't uh, take too long to do this. I'll just maybe get my, my brush. I'm using a hog hair brush, round brush. And then what I like to do is just have a, um, a bit of a paper towel or tissue in my hand like this. I can dry off a little bit of the water if I want. And then just start with my paint colors and these are my are, again our primaries so then what I'll do is we'll start putting in our first primary let's do the yellow first okay we have our yellow in our first primary here then I'll rinse off my brush dry off a little bit of the water 
And then we'll pick up our red next. We'll do red. And you can see I kind of just take the straight paint. You can thin it out with a little bit of water if you want. And there we have it, our red primary. Now my part, you can kind of see my color wheel space divisions aren't exactly perfect, but they're okay. We can work with these. And then uh, let's, um, we'll do blue now, the, 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 our third primary color. And you'll notice that red, yellow, and blue are your three primary colors that all other colors are derived from. So if, it, you know, sometimes if, I don't know, when I was young, and maybe I, I used to look at the TV screen, you used to see the dots in the in the TV screen. Did anyone ever do that? When they were young, you look at this TV screen, uh, the television screen. When I was little, I remember being a little boy and looking at the TV screen, and I would see all the little dots, the red, yellow, and blue dots. And then from there, I would see other colors too, but I always noticed that everything seemed to be red, yellow, and blue, small tiny dots on the television screen. But then when I stepped back, I could see that it was all the other colors were, I guess, were being mixed from those three colors. And that's what made up our the colors on the television for color TV. And I think when I was really young, there was just black and white TV. So my earliest recollection of television was black and white TVs. That That's what really was what, when I was a little boy, you know, very young, that was the TVs we had were black and white. They weren't color at that point. And then eventually they, we had color TVs. So um, it's just an interesting uh, thing to know about colors is really that everything is derived from these three colors, red, yellow, and blue. And then now what we'll do is we'll make our secondary colors. So these are our three primaries. And um, let's start mixing these together. So let's mix red and yellow together first to make an orange. So the first thing I would notice is that if we're going to make an orange, we're not going to need that much red. Just a little bit of red in this should be enough to create an orange color because that red is really very, very strong. And I think that looks good. And then we'll just, so we keep on track here with our, let's just make this orange. And then blue and yellow is green. So we just wanna, before we start painting in our secondary colors, we'll just make a note of what they are first on our, as we go, so. Let's do our orange. You might have to add a little bit of extra paint as you go. Okay, we have our orange. Now I'll rinse off my brush again. And again, all you need is water. You just have to rinse off your brush with water. And that's about it. That's the, the great thing about the new oil paints. The technologies they have are amazing, aren't they? Uh, years ago, you always had to use all of the um, turpentine and turpenoids and uh, paint thinners. Um, a lot of people were allergic to those type of things, those solvents. So years ago, a lot of people couldn't even paint in oils because they were they would become sick from from using them, and and become you know have a lot of allergies and, and problems. So nowadays, the great uh, engineers and scientists that create paints, they're able to make them water soluble, water mixable, and now we can paint with oils and we don't have to worry about anything. We can get some on our clothes, on our furniture, on our carpeting, whatever. You can wash it up with soap and water. That's all you need. This is pretty much like 
using watercolors is very similar. You can most times you can always wash up everything with soap and water. So there's no need to worry about anything like that of messing up furniture and clothing and things like that. All right, so now we're going to come over here and we're going to use just a touch of blue in this yellow to make our green. And I will say that this green is really a nice, beautiful olive green. I really enjoy olive green. It's kind of that really... That green that's like you would see in nature, on leaves, trees, the forest, plants, flowers, you know, that lively green. I added a little more water to this, you can see. And then let's mix up our last color, violet, which is red and blue from our primaries, red and blue. And again, um, I'll take some blue, mix it up over here just to get some blue over here going. Grab a little bit of the red. A little more of that red until I kind of see a nice violet and that looks pretty good. And this violet is dark. If you can kind of imagine you're taking an already really dark French ultramarine blue and then adding red to it. And red is pretty, you know, as far as like value goes, tonal value, we talk about value as being light and dark of colors. Like this is a very light tonal value, our yellow. And then when you come over here to the blue, you'll see, wow, that is really dark. That's a dark tonal value. And when you mix red and blue together, that even makes the blue go darker. And so you can see that this violet is quite dark, actually. It's almost getting to the point where it almost looks like it's, you know, almost to the point where it's black color. A black tonal value, completely like the darkest dark of your tonal value chart that you might have. And we'll go into that too. We'll go into some charts that you can make with your oil painting. And I'm hoping you'll save these type of things we're creating, color wheels and so forth, to just save in your studio so that you can refer back to them. But now we have our primaries here. So what I'd like to do is just take a quick break now. We've got our primary and secondary colors. When we come back, we'll label these. So maybe we'll make a couple quick labels for each of the colors that we've just created in the mixes. And then we'll create our tertiary colors, which is what the goal of this video was, is to keep working our color wheel until we can build out at least to the tertiary colors. And from that point, you'll kind of see that as you mix your colors together and you mix them out from the first primary colors to your secondaries and then your tertiary colors, you're going to have a great, wonderful array of colors that you can use in your paintings. And as well, we're going to cover again uh, in a subsequent, very soon, we're going to also show you how you can add white and black and gray. So you might, to lighten a color, you might add your white paint. We'll show you how to do that in, the, in, a, in another video coming up very soon. Um, so that when you're working with your oils, you're already going to have a great sort of like a roadmap of how you're going to mix your colors, how you're going to mix grays from your primary colors and your secondary colors. And then also, um, you're going to learn adding some tint, uh, some white to your colors, as well as adding some black to make maybe some of your colors a little darker. You want maybe in shadows, you need some You'll need to mix a little black into your to your color mixes. So you'll we'll cover all of that. And also gray. We're going to mix gray into our colors to give it some light and dark effects, uh, our colors. Okay, so let's come back in just a second. I just want to take a quick break. Always remember, um, if you enjoy these videos, give me a thumbs up. That's the way I know you're having a good time watching these and learning some new things about oil painting. And uh, also, too, I always mention all the supplies are below. So you can see in the comment section below all of the uh, art supplies that you would need, ever need for oil painting are going to be right there. Very convenient for you so you can look everything up, price compare, do whatever you're going to do. And then also, too, I mentioned uh, subscribing. If you're liking these videos, maybe um, you'll notice I do a lot of watercolor videos, but I am going to start to, again, start to create oil painting videos. So if you're interested in that, you're the artist, you're only, only you are going to be able to know whether you want to start branching out and taking some new, um, uh, some new things, you know, like 
it's up to you as an artist you might say to yourself oh i'm just totally happy about watercolor i don't want to do anything else that's absolutely fine then don't even worry about it i will put all of my videos that i'm working in oils i'll put right in the comments as well as in the title of the video oils so whenever you see oils you know it's an oil video so you can just skip over it you know or maybe you just want to watch it because maybe in the future maybe in a year from now you might want to pick up oils so why not learn some stuff about it now that's how i think of it anyway I've been studying oils for, for a number of years now and working with them just a little bit here and there. But uh, in any case, let's have fun. Let's enjoy oils. Again, it's a great break from watercolor. If you've been painting a long time in watercolor, <laughs> it can get boring. So that's how I am. I'm always looking to learn something new, get my curiosity going again. And this is really a way to do it. Pick up another medium, which is really close to watercolors. I mean, if, if you're a watercolor artist, this is like... Working with oils is pretty much almost very similar, especially now that you have your water mixable oil paints. So it's almost just like you're going to have an easy time of it. It's going to be a lot more fun and, you know, to, to do it, you know, to start working in oils. It'll be simple for you, actually. Okay. All right. So we'll be right back. Okay. So we're going to get started on making our tertiary colors around our color wheel. We've got our primaries and secondaries completed. Um, I will use my dark pencil here and we'll do so. I found a little cap from something around the studio. So I'll use that for my circles for my tertiary colors. So basically my tertiary colors are going to be on each point here of my color wheel. So if you can imagine each spoke, if these we could call these like spokes, like a bicycle tire, these spokes, each spoke will have a tertiary color extending out from the color wheel at each location. And you can see this as like a, a ship wheel. Maybe you're into um, boats, so you can imagine this is like a beautiful wooden ship wheel. And uh, so that's what I'm, I'm going to start out here. I'll just, we'll make it a little bit away from the color wheel. I'll just go around like this and we'll just do that again at every spoke or every point on the wheel. And don't mind the neighbor. They have a nice little cute dog. I call it Rusty. I'm not sure. He comes out every once in a while and he gets excited and he's barking. I don't mind it. Hopefully you won't mind it. I'm sure many of you have dogs and cats and animals and birds and things. And we're just going around getting our pencil uh, lines in for our circles for our tertiary colors. Okay. Now that we have that completed, we're just going to Recall that as we're going around and making our tertiary colors, we're just going to be using the two colors that are on either side of that spoke. So you can make a little arrow like that. If it's easy to kind of remember, you just take an arrow in each direction from each of these spokes on the color wheel. Like that and that kind of just kind of keeps it in our minds that we want to make sure we're mixing the two correct colors to get our tertiary colors like this you don't need to do that if you feel confident that you can mix the colors and not get uh, crossed up with things but I'll do it just for my own For my own notes here, I want to make sure I get this accurate. Okay, so now when we're going to mix our tertiary colors, we're just going to, let's start at the top here. Now we're going to mix orange and yellow together. So, probably not going to see a whole lot of, I might need to, I'll put a little more yellow out on my, this is cadmium yellow. Yellow. 
and orange. And we have the orange here. And I'll just take some of that cadmium yellow and mix it into that orange. Like this. Okay. Might need to add just a little more red to that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So that's a cross between the orange and the yellow. And the yellow is the primary and the orange was the secondary color that we have from the red and the yellow. So you can kind of see we're trying to aim at in between the orange and the yellow. That's about pretty good. And we'll rinse off our brush. And again, I always mention these are just wonderful to work with, the um, Windsor & Newton water mixable water mixable oil paints non-toxic you can just clean up as with soap and water normal cleanup pretty much the same would be with watercolors so now let's work our way around to the right here yellow and green really nice that is almost like a yellow ochre color or a raw sienna if you're used to working in watercolors and used to wor working with the palette that i use most times you'll notice that a lot of these colors are going to really just tie right into the watercolor palette that we use all the time so this is basically we're making like a yellow ochre from the green and the yellow and then we're going to so now we have green so now we're going to take green and blue actually you know what I'm, I'm looking at this 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 is actually not uh, there's no tertiary colors that's why I think here what happened was what happened here was I added this circle that should not be here so if you're working along now if this happens there's there's two ways you can kind of fix this if you're doing your color wheel and this is good to do these type of things uh, when I make an error when I'm doing like a video like this the first tendency I have is just to shut off the camera and start again and start a new video and but instead of doing that I'll do something uh, that I don't normally do maybe this is going to be good in a, in, a, in a sense because I'll just try to deal with the fact that I made an error here and let me take some white paint titanium white paint and let's see if I can just paint over this and that works fine. So I take some titanium white like that and I cover over that. And uh, like that. And then I notice the same here for this. I got a little bit over uh, zealous with my circles here. So if you are creating this at home and you were following along with me, this is how you would remedy, remedy the problem or the issue. It's a, a challenge, not really a problem. I think of problems as challenges. They're just a challenge to see how we can do something different to fix the, the challenge, to make it easier or this is way easier than me shutting off my camera and starting all over again. So it saves me time and I don't mind just saying let's correct a challenge we have here with our 
oil painting chart that we're making for the tertiary colors. So there you go. Good as new. And what are we going to do next? Um, we're going to keep working along here. I'll take a quick break right now. I just want to empty my water in my water container because uh, the oil paints uh, do create some muddy looking water. So I'm going to start to just, uh, I'm going to go find some bottled water to start a new water container, fresh water. And we'll come right back after this. We're going to continue working with our tertiary colors. And then once we're done putting our tertiary colors in, around this color wheel that we've created, we'll label everything with some Sharpie marker. So this way we can have this in our studio at all times. We can reference back to it, not that we have to. And I'm sure many of you have books about the color wheels and maybe you have your own charts that you've picked up over the years. There's a lot of great stuff out there on the internet and in books. And there's a lot of artists that maybe, I know I have, there's a few artists that I've followed over, the, watercolor artists over the years that have really nice laminated, you can purchase like laminated color wheels from them and they show all the colors they use and uh, they have their own like kind of uh, spin on the water, uh, the color wheel and the colors they use and how they mix colors. So this is just the real basics of it. And then, you know, as you work with oils a little more and even as you work with your watercolors, you'll have fun, you'll experiment with new colors and things like this. But uh, let's come back in just a second and um, we'll continue on mixing our uh, tertiary colors. All right, so we're going to keep working here. I have some fresh water now in my water bucket. And uh, let's continue here. Let's do our mix of green and blue. I'll have to mix some more green here. Touch of blue to get our green mixture, our olive green there. Okay, so that's our olive green. And then we're going to mix that olive green with the blue. So it's going to be a little bit darker like that. And sometimes I'll have to mix a little bit of a extra bit of paint, but already you can see some beautiful grayish colors, right? Um, as we mix these tertiary colors, we're getting more beautiful grayish type looking washes, which look wonderful. So you have like a cool gray here with that blue mixed in with that green. I think that looks phenomenal. And uh, let's keep working along here. So we're going to do the blue and violet now together. And so we had our violet over here. So we already have that violet mixed up here. I would say we could make a little more violet maybe. Let's make our violet here like that. Then go in and get a little extra blue. Mixed with the violet. So it's going to be a little bit of a darker violet. like this. And you have to imagine I'm using a little bit of water to mix, uh, thin out the paints a little bit. Um, you could, you could go with really thick, thick paint and not thin it down as we're doing here. Let's do the next one. We'll, th we'll go thicker with the next, uh, tertiary color. So now we're going to mix red with violet. So, First, let's mix a little more violet. Red and blue makes violet. So there we have violet. Let's thicken it up a little bit. Make a little bit of a thicker violet. Okay, that's a pretty thick violet there. And then add a little more red to that violet to make it a little bit uh, toward the warm side. And then I'll try to pick up that thick paint. And you can kind of see we're using thicker paint now. So this was a little thinner over here. These were kind of thin, actually. We thinned these down a little bit with water. You can go as thick or as thin as you want with your oil paints, incidentally. So now you see 
this is a very, very dark, uh, as far as tonal value, the dark and light of things, like this is lighter, right? That's a light tonal value. These are more of a medium tonal value here. Then we're getting darker in our tonal values, and here you're, we're really dark here. This tertiary color is really dark. That can almost pass for like almost a black color, like almost completely dark, you know, without any any lightness to it. And that is uh, good. And it's a little thicker in, with paint too. Now we're going to do our last tertiary color. That's going to be uh, red and orange mixed together. So let's mix up some. We have red here and then we need some orange. So our, we, let's mix some more orange here. Yellow, cadmium yellow and red. Gets us to that orange that we're looking for, like that. Okay, so now we have the orange. And then we want to go with more red. And the reason I'm using a little more tube, squeeze out, I'm squeezing out a little more tube, uh, cadmium red here, is because you can kind of see I've got some darker purple that we had mixed into this red a little bit. So that red's getting a little bit... Uh, contaminated, not contaminated, but you know, it's getting a little bit, there's there's some other darker colors and mixes in there we don't want to really, so we could just easily take out our cadmium red, squeeze out a little bit of red, and put that right into our orange. And there we have it, we have a thicker like this. And then we have red-orange, which is our tertiary color, mixing red and orange together. And you can see how it's a cross between the red and the orange. Same thing here, we have red and violet. This might be, um, we could probably, I would say, this should be a little bit lighter in tonal value. This has came out a little bit dark, so what we'll do is we'll try to create a better tertiary color from our red and our violet than we have here because I think it should be more red than the darker violet. I'm happy with this, the blue and the violet. That came out just right. I think it's in between the blue and the violet. Again, same thing here, blue and green. That came out just right. Same thing here, green and yellow came out to be like a raw sienna or yellow ochre. And this is fine. This is a yellow and orange mixed together for, again, our tertiary color up here, which is a cross between the orange and the yellow kind of like a um, warmer yellow or a little bit of a um, cooler orange. And again, this looks really good too. This is a red orange. So now let's try to see if we can do this one over again. How do we do that? Well, I'll take my... I'm going to take my uh, paper towel and then just try to lift up some of that paint very carefully. I don't want to smudge or ruin my ruin our um, color wheel here and our notes that we're doing. So I think we wanted to make this red purple. And I think it was too much toward the purple, toward the violet. And then sometimes we just have to keep working the colors until we get it just right. I'll do one more blot up there and I'll do another bit of red here. Still a little bit dark, I think. So this is where you have to experiment to get it just right. 
and that is good. That to me is red and, a little, and purple. And we could add a little blue to that. There we go. All right, so that's our tertiary colors. Now what we'll do is we'll um, label our color wheel. Sometimes I like to be pretty, uh, keep things kind of neat. So I might take a, a pencil first and uh, just make a line across the top of my make a line, two lines across. And I'll make this like this. So we'll just kind of call this color wheel. Just lift this up a little bit. Some of this tape, I'll just lift that out of the way there. Tertiary colors. There we go. So we've labeled our chart. Now we have a second chart to work from. We have our first chart here that we created. The oil color wheel. That was our first, where we kind of keyed in on the primary and secondaries. And then now we have our tertiary colors on the outer ring of our circle for our color wheel. And then we can also uh, label these two. We could just... Yellow, green. And this is green, blue. And this is blue, violet. And this is red, violet. And there's sometimes even colors that come in tubes. You can buy tubes of paint that are named this same way. You'll notice that. And this one is orange-yellow, or yellow-orange. And this is red-orange. All right, so we have everything labeled. And again, these are great things to keep in your uh, in your studio, where you work, your home, as you have your set up in your house, your home, wherever you may work. Hopefully you have a little workstation you can have all set, set aside for yourself that you can keep all your art supplies and everything in one spot so that uh, every time you go to work you kind of already have everything all set up and ready to go and you don't have to go looking around uh, and things like that. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, when I first started out with uh, painting, when I was younger, you know, 15, 20 years ago, Everything was all over. I had paints in the basement, palettes in the attic. I had all kinds of different things all over the place. So anytime I wanted to sit down and do artwork, I was 
took me an hour just to find everything and get everything together. So a great way to do it is always think about try to make things easy for yourself when you're going to sit down and paint and draw. And, and when you're doing your uh, oil painting or your watercolor painting, try to have everything organized. So maybe you get yourself a good size plastic bin um, uh, or, a, or a box, like a cardboard box, whatever. Put all your art supplies in that. And then, uh, you know, when you're ready to do some work, drawing and painting, you just grab that box and then you take it and you bring it to wherever you're going to, the location you're going to paint uh, in your home or if you're going to go out uh, outside and do some painting or if you're going to be traveling over the weekend somewhere, visiting with family or friends or if you're going to do some vacationing, you'll always have a box or like maybe a, a small a backpack. You can keep, you know, put everything in there and this way you have everything nice and organized in one spot and this way you'll always uh, have everything that you need um, as you're uh, doing your, creating your artwork. Okay, all right, so this is a fun uh, uh, tutorial. Again, uh, thumbs up if you like this type of video for oil painting. Um, all the supplies, again, are in the comment section below. I have my watercolor book, too. Sometimes I'll put that in the oil painting uh, uh, videos as well, because you can actually take the watercolor paintings and just create them using oil paints. That really would work the same. You just, you'd be working from my book using the photographs of my paintings in the book. And um, so you have all of that there below in the comment section. And subscribe if it's you, if you're brand new here. It's the first time you've been here. Welcome aboard. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for joining along. You're at the right place at the right time. We're just uh, getting started with some oil painting. We're just going to cover some basics here uh, as we go. And then you'll see after a couple of weeks or a month or so, we'll be starting to work into some really nice looking uh, paintings. We'll keep the paintings kind of basic to start with. And then we'll move on to some more interesting things as we go. All right, so until I uh, meet up with you again, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.